All right, everyone, thanks for jumping on. Uh, Coach is here, so we'll get started. Um, again, like normal, I'll put your question. If you have a question, go ahead and put it in the chat. Uh, first question, Lincoln Journal star, Parker Gabriel. Scott, how are you? Good, Parker, how are you? Oh, I'm doing well. Um, a couple of weeks ago, there was a, a bunch of reporting about um, trying to maybe move the Oklahoma game. What can you say about that? What was your role in that? And then additionally, um, Bill Moose talked about maybe trying to move a game to September 4th. Would you be in favor of that? Yeah, I think in general, there, there's been ongoing discussions for a while about what's best for the program. Um, I think uh, a lot of options were probably on the table. Um, you know, our, our program, I give Bill Moose a lot of credit. I think we had fewer furloughs and layoffs and salary reductions than almost anybody in our league or in the country. Um, I think Bill did a great job navigating us through that. Uh, that being said, there was a 40 to $50 million budget hit to our athletic department, and I think there was a lot of discussions on um, ways to help uh, help with that. I think they looked into a lot of different things. Um, I think the biggest thing for me as a football coach is we um, we were scheduled to play in Ireland week zero. Made a lot of sense playing overseas to take week one off and get your feet back under you when you get stateside. Uh, now that that game's not overseas, um, sure it doesn't make a lot of sense for us to have a, a week one bye. Um, I think bringing our players back a week early and then asking them to play one game and, and sit out doesn't make a lot of sense. And the biggest thing for me is I, I think the city of Lincoln starving, our, our uh, local economy starving uh, for home games and getting in the stands to see uh, our football team. Um, for recruiting too, uh, we need home games and uh, the earlier the better. I think right now as it sits, we only have one home game scheduled till October. Uh, and even for recruiting, um, a lot of kids all made their decisions by then. We haven't had recruits on campus in almost a year and a half, two years. So I think we're looking at any and all options to try to uh, change the schedule to, to get more home games and get more home games early. Brian Christopherson, 24-7 Sports. Hey, Scott. Uh, with uh, special teams, have you mapped out um, – how you want to handle that coaching wise and divvy up responsibilities. Yeah. You know, last year we divvied it up to the entire coaching staff. Um, that, that model was tough. That model was especially tough in a COVID year. Um, Mike Dawson's going to do it for us now. Um, he's been a special teams coach at a lot of different places and at the one, one a level. Uh, so he's going to be the lead for us on all the special teams and, and certainly get a lot of help from the other assistants, just like we had last year. But uh, Mike's going to take the lead on it and uh, as long uh, as well as coaching outside linebackers. So um, excited for for much needed progress there. I could also ask, how could uh, Coach uh, Bush help, you know, with special teams? He has that experience and sort of uh, could you just talk about his hire and as an analyst, what what he can bring? Yeah, Bill's obviously an accomplished coach. Um, I think it's a great, works out great for us and for him. You know, he's got family in Lincoln. Um, I don't think without that uh, that we'd have an opportunity to have him in the role that we have him in. But Bill's going to help primarily with the defense, just off the field uh, schematics and things with helping our coaches. I'm sure he'll give a hand uh, to Coach Doss on special teams too. Uh, he brings a lot of expertise to the table that I think our coaches will be able to utilize. Thank you. Sean Callahan, Husker Online. Hey, Coach, to clarify on Dawson, will he carry that title then next to his name? Will you add that as special teams coordinator um, along with his position title? Yeah, I think we will. Um, you know, titles aren't really important to me, and I don't think it's real important to our staff. Just continuing to improve and, and win games is what's important to us. But um, we'll, we'll probably give him that title, Sean. And, you know, there's – field goal and field goal block that I don't think he'll have a lot to do with. I think that'll be Coach Austin and Coach Tuyote basically running those. But uh, Mike's going to take the lead on uh, punt, punt return, kickoff, and kick return. And then, Coach, starting spring this late, uh, what are the advantages in your eyes, maybe having those extra couple of weeks that you had in the winter and then maybe being able to get outside more and having five weeks in a row? I mean, have you been able to pull some real advantages you'll get with this later spring schedule? Yeah, I think the first advantage was just uh, having a, a – a really good winner. Um, we talked to our guys about b breaking the year up into four parts, and, uh, and the first one's over. Uh, winter conditioning is over. 
Uh, we started semester later, uh, so normally we do get a full winter in, but we were able to give the guys some more time off uh, before we started and, and get a full uh, winter conditioning in. Uh, we just did testing for the first time um, since I've been here. Um, old school testing like we used to do uh, with performance index and uh, 40s, 10s, agilities, vertical jumps, squats, and cleans. Um, seeing the improvement that our guys made in, in those areas I think gives them a lot of confidence. Uh, we certainly owe a lot to Zach and his strength staff, Andrew Strop and the others uh, for the improvement that, that we made there. Uh, starting spring ball late, I, I do think the weather will be good. Um, I'm glad we don't have spring break in the middle of it to break up spring practice. I think we'll get more out of spring practice that way. Um, and really the only risk you run is if you get the type of injury there where somebody's out for a while, you're getting closer to season. But um, those are the risks you have to run to, to practice hard and get better. Sam McEwen, Omaha Oral Herald. Scott, do you have a sense of <clears throat> what your wide receiver and running back rooms are going to look like and the competition that's about to, un, uh, to unfold there? Yeah, I have an idea for the competition that's going to unfold. Uh, it's going to be exciting to see who comes out on, on top. Um, you know, I'll start with the receiver room. There, there's a lot of guys there with a lot of talent. Um, I'd, I'd be real comfortable saying that's the best uh, talent we've had in that room uh, since I've been here and, and probably in a long time. Um, guys are going to get a lot of reps, so we'll see how that shakes out. Uh, but I think we have everybody up and ready to go for spring, and, and I'm excited about not only the talent but the depth at that spot. Uh, running back similar. You know, we have a, a bunch of young guys, a transfer. Um, all those guys look great right now and look great in testing and coming out of winter conditioning. So uh, it's going to be a competition, and uh, everybody's going to get their chances to show what they can do, and uh, we'll see who comes out on top. Historically, when you guys used to do the old school testing, the running backs used to be the guys that – that did a lot of the great testing. I know you did too, but you know, Amon and those guys back in the day, how did these running backs test? They tested well. Um, I think we're probably Sam going to release uh, uh, a lot of the testing results um, and, and we'll get that probably out this week. So people can have an idea of the, the work that, that Zach and his group did and the work the players did this off season. Um, I was really happy with the improvements we made. I think, uh, Zach told me all but seven players on our whole roster improved in every single category of testing. Um, so that, that's quite an improvement across the board. Uh, we had some unbelievable numbers. Uh, Deontay Williams broke the all-time Nebraska record in the agility run. Um, Oliver Martin had a 40-inch vertical jump and was the tops of that. Um, had some really good electronic 40 times and 10 times. Uh, so we'll get all kind of all those numbers out. Um, running backs did well, um, ran some good 40s, had some really good agility numbers, uh, did a good job in the weight room. Uh, so a across the board, I was impressed with uh, the improvements that were made and, and the overall strength and athletic ability of our team. Thank you. Thank you. Associate Press, Eric Olson. Hey, Scott. Uh, one of the loop back to what Parker was asking about on Oklahoma, just a couple follow-ups. Was it you or somebody else specifically that even suggested to take a look at canceling Oklahoma? And then the second part of it is, uh, what's your comment on the narrative that got out there about it was Nebraska trying to duck Oklahoma? Well, I grew up on Nebraska, Oklahoma. I, I can't count the number of times I was in Memorial Stadium in the snow and and other times in November watching those games, um, Mike Rozier's games and Billy Sims. And um, that that's my favorite rivalry in, in sports because it's the one I grew up around. Um, I will tell you too, our players are excited to take a chance, uh, their chances against uh, a really good team. I'm sure Oklahoma, like they have been recently, is going to be one of the best teams in the country. Uh, our players are excited to play it. I, I think the whole narrative and conversation started on ways to um, fix the budget windfalls that we've had. You know, there's some schools, I think, that have cut sports and cut salaries and done a lot of other things. And um, like I said, I give Bill a lot of credit. He was committed to keeping everything intact and giving our student athletes opportunities in every sport, uh, men and women. Um, so I think that the conversation was started to figure out a way to get more revenue to the university. Um, I'm certainly excited about any chance to, like I said, have more home games 
uh, early in the season. Um, for us in the situation we're in, to only play one home game before October doesn't make a lot of sense. So um, we're excited to play that game. Uh, I, I hope that, that we can do something with the schedule to make sure our fans can get in and see us uh, sooner and more often. So was it was it you or Bill or somebody else that even broached the idea? Yeah, Somebody I don't remember where the there. I don't remember where the conversation started for sure. Um, I just know, um, with a forty fifty million dollar, you know, cut to last year's budget, I think any any and all things were on the table. Uh, I think the conversation even evolved after the the game in Ireland was canceled. Um, I think the first thing we did was start looking for home games for week one, uh, and then looking for other options. Um, I'm glad it landed the way it did. Uh, I, I just hope that we can make some kind of alterations. I think Bill's mentioned it too, uh, to make sure our fans can get in and see us uh, sooner and we can get recruits on campus sooner. So you're saying unequivocally that this is a game that you want? I'm excited to play it. I, I'll tell you, our, our kids uh, our kids want to play it. When they heard the news, uh, our leadership group uh, called a meeting and wanted me to there to make sure that they had an opportunity to play against one of the best teams in the country. Thank you. Hey Scott, um, given the uh, the influx of talent that you have coming back, especially on defense, do you have to toe the line between development with these proven guys and development with the younger guys? And because you're coming off a year without spring, does that play into how many reps people get? Uh, how do you balance that in development and yet keeping guys pseudo fresh? Pseudo -fresh. The guys that are proven. Yeah, first of all, I'm just excited to have a spring ball again. Um, yeah, I think it, it. You know, to my my opinion, it's played out in college football and probably college basketball that uh, through the the COVID year, the the teams that had veteran players, I think probably overachieved a little, and anybody that was breaking in new players, um, probably generally speaking, underachieved a little bit. Um, and and that makes sense when you have fewer opportunities with your guys, fewer chances to get everybody um, on the same page and and get real practice reps and preseason reps. Um, so I'm excited to have spring ball. Uh, some of our young players need it, didn't get it last year. Uh, we had a conversation today with the coaching staff about finding that balance with some of the old guys. Um, you know, with all the talk of transfer portal and um, kids leaving, I, I can't tell you how ex excited I am that we have that many super seniors coming back uh, that honestly could have gone anywhere and played and wanted to be back here. Uh, so we got to find a balance with them. Uh, to make sure that we're, we're doing what we need to do to get those guys better and ready to play next fall, uh, and also, you know, not grinding them through spring ball. Uh, so, so we'll find the right balance between giving the young guys reps and making sure the guys that have been here for a long time uh, get their share and get ready to play in the fall. Derek Peterson, Dale Varsity. Hey Scott, um, culture's been a, a big conversation around here. Um, for the last couple of years. And, and it seemed like there was a concerted effort from you guys um, this off season, not, you know, not unique, but to, to build camaraderie with the team. I mean, we saw videos of like a dodgeball thing in the Hawks. Um, you guys taking the team bowling. How do you think those efforts went? How do you feel about just the tightness of, of your team and, and, and how your guys have bonded kind of throughout the winter? Well, culture isn't just a big deal. The last couple of years, I think it's always a big deal. It probably gets talked about until people are tired of hearing about it. But when you have uh, good camaraderie, good leadership, good culture built on your team, uh, you give yourself a great chance. Uh, those things aren't easy to build. You know, I walked into a program here when I transferred back where the culture was already there, and we just had to assimilate to it and then try to pass it on to the next group. Um, and we've been in a process of trying to get the thing built here the way we want it. Um, you can't do it without good leaders. I think that's why it's important that we have uh, some of the guys coming back to join us again this year. Uh, some of the young guys that we have uh, need to step up and grab the mantle and be the leaders. Um, you know, we're closer than we've ever been a, of having a culture the way that the coaching staff wants it. Uh, I think the key to that is making sure the players take ownership in it, um, that they feel comfortable around each other, that they care about each other and willing to fight for each other. Um, those things are tough to build when you can't even be in the same meeting room through a COVID year. So we had some ground to make up there and um, made a conscious effort to get our guys around each other in some of those situations and uh, feel good about uh, 
the teammates we have on this team right now and, and where we are. We still have a lot to do and a lot to build on, but I, I think those things helped. Thank you. Yeah, Scott, what, what's the challenge? What, what do you want to see as a next step for Adrian on the field this spring? And then sort of similar to the conversation about, you know, veteran guys versus young guys and getting reps, how much of an effort will you make or do you need to make to see Logan with sort of your top units to get an idea of where he's at at this point in his career? Yeah, starting with Adrian, um, I expect Adrian to be the player that, that he expects to be this year, that everybody expects to be him to be. Um, you know, he's he's done some things in a Nebraska uniform um, that are exceptional. Um, I really want to see him limit the mistakes and the bad plays. Uh, I talked to him about this, but uh, the Rutgers game, Rutgers game, the last game of the year, was an example. Uh, you know, I think he was 24 or 28 or something like that uh, with a bunch of yards rushing and a bunch of yards passing and two fumbles and two interceptions and one other really bad play. And other than, like, other than that, he played like a – all conference player. Um, if he can uh, make sure and, and be efficient and not make those mistakes, he's got enough talent uh, to carry us as far as, as we want to go. So excited to see his continued development and growth. Um, you know, Smothers and Harburg are both going to get plenty of opportunities this spring uh, to show us what they can do. Masker as well. Uh, we get a lot of reps in spring ball, so those guys are going to get a ton of opportunity and um, looking forward to seeing those guys uh, develop too. Have you had this, maybe this is, um, you know, sort of with Heinrich in particular, have you had more of a chance this winter to to be around your guys a little bit more, just given that you're not, I think in a normal year, you'd be out on the road recruiting or doing a lot of that. So have you got to know the guys that are brand new year to your program more at this stage than you would in a typical year? Yeah, I think so. You know, we haven't been able to be on the field with them yet. Um, see, you know, Harburg throw a football yet. So I'm anxious to see him uh, take some live reps. But you know, we've been in, in the building the whole time. We're not on the road in January. Uh, so, so we've gotten to know those guys well. I think they've integrated into the team really well, all the newcomers that are here. I uh, think they have a, a big head start. And we'll get even a bigger head start uh, through spring ball. Uh, so th those young guys, uh, we're going to throw them into the deep end in spring ball and let them compete and I excited to see how they come out. But um, we definitely spent a, a lot of time with those guys off the field. And um, ex ex like I said, excited to see them go out in, in spring ball and show us what they got. Andrew Ward, KLKN. Hey, Scott, you mentioned fans a couple of times. Just just curious, what was your initial reaction when the Big Ten made their announcement last week allowed some fans to come and watch sporting events again? Well, I'm excited. Um, you know, I, I, I do believe that should be a local decision. Um, you know, we need to do what's best. We're kind of past the point where uh, we, ha we need to keep it all the same. Uh, everybody's struggling, and uh, athletic departments need revenue, and, and fans are hungry to see uh, spring games and, and actual competitions. So I, I'm glad they made the decision they did. Um, I'm just, I just miss the fans. Uh, going through that year with no fans was rough. Uh, that's part of what makes Nebraska special, is people fill, filling Memorial Stadium and the Sea of Red. And um, I'm sure as many fans as we can have in the spring game, uh, they'll be there. And uh, really got our fingers crossed that uh, come September, we have some home games and, and we're able to see a full stadium. Scott, um, how comfortable are you right now with the uh, offensive line and what you have back? Uh, Jurgens, Piper, Ben Hart to start with, but um, do you also have a sense of how you're going to fill um, a, a, a guard, an open guard spot? Yeah, I think it's a good problem when you have probably one spot that's up for grabs. Um, you're looking at that last game of, of the 2020 season. Um, and Mitch, it's hard to keep track anymore of what grade everybody's in because of the extra year with with the COVID exception. Uh, but you know, we were, we started a, a redshirt freshman left tackle and a redshirt freshman left guard and a Cam. I don't even know what he is anymore because he's got an extra year. But technically, I guess with the extra year, he was still a redshirt freshman and Ben Hart was a redshirt freshman. Um, so excited to have all those guys back. Thought they played. 
probably their best game of the year as an offensive line. Um, as a unit with that group in there and four really young guys. Um, got some other talent that played some in that game and, and are going to compete for time at those spots and, and at the guard spot as well. So expect to see uh, Hickson and Ezra Miller and Brant Banks and um, Nuri and a bunch of other guys, uh, Bando, compete for time, uh, compete with each other for the right guard spot and also with the guys that played last year for, for time at those spots. So. Um, like a lot of other groups, I, I think we're more talented up front than we have been. Uh, definitely have more depth than we have. Do you look at Corcoran as, even though he's just started one game, as you know, in that in that category um, with the first group, like a you know a, a player who you can you can lean on? I certainly expect Turner to be that type of player. Yeah, um, you know, for coming in for his first start as a Collegiate in the last game of the season, um, there was really no drop off for us with him playing at that spot. Uh, we lost a, a guy that gave a lot to this program and, and started a lot of games here. And um, Turner came in and, and did great in his first start. So he's a super talented kid and expect him to, to take a giant leap this year and, and be somebody that we can uh, really trust on the offensive line. Hey, Scott, uh, just a nuts and bolts question. Is there anybody who's out um, due to injury this spring or that has to be limited uh, because of injury? Yeah, I, you know, I don't want to get into each individual right now. Um, appreciate you asking me that again after practice. We went through it with Mark today, and, and it, it kind of runs the gamut from some guys that might miss the whole thing to guys that are limited to non-contact to guys that can be in contact but not full tackle. Um, for the most part, our training staff's done a great job, and, and we have all hands on deck. Um, we'll be missing a few guys through spring. But uh, ask me again after practice one, and, and I can give you a better update. If I could ask you about a couple of receivers, too. I know you haven't had a chance to really see Toure Samari out there, but uh, just early impressions of him and also how, uh, how Omar Manning has been coming along. Yeah, those are two guys, uh, Samari and Omar, that could do big things here. Um, really been impressed with Samari's approach uh, to coming in here. Uh, you can tell he's a he's a veteran. Uh, he's a grown up. He's really been a pro with his preparation and his work in the weight room and on on the field conditioning. Um, he's going to make us better in the pass game. Uh, we're going to start him off inside uh, and let him compete with a couple other guys. Uh, I think he's going to give us somebody that can can get down the field and give us a, a threat in the passing game from the slot. Uh, he's a bigger body that will help us block and um, also be able to catch crossing routes and be a little bigger target for us in the slot. So I, I expect him to make us a better team. Um, been really impressed with Omar's progress and, and on top of a lot of other guys. Um, we just need Omar to be there every day and keep improving. His talent will take care of the rest. Uh, but like I talked about at that position, um, excited for Levi Falk and Oliver Martin and Xavier Betts. Uh, Will Nixon's back. Wyatt Lever's doing some really good things. Uh, Wyatt would have tied the all-time record for agility run at Nebraska had Deontay not beat it. So um, just a bunch of guys at, at that position that I'm excited to see compete in spring. Uh, Lante Brown tested great. Uh, so the the talent's really good there, and and I'm excited to see those guys compete. Thank you. Thank you. Steve Sipple, Daryl Star. Would it, Scott? Would it be safe to say, or are you turning up the emphasis on the non-quarterback run game this spring? I mean, is that is that an accurate characterization? Um, Sip, I, I want to get I want to really dial in on fundamentals this year. And uh, when you talk about getting ready for a season without a spring ball and a fall camp, um, some of the improvements that we needed to make on some of the basic things uh, are tougher to do when you're getting a team ready to play week one um, with a broken fall camp. So we're really going to focus on, on being a physical team, on fundamentals up front, uh, fundamentals in the run game, on defense. Um, I think if we get really good at those things, then some of our base things will work a little bit better. Uh, then we can get creative with some others. But I, I told the team we need to be able to hang our hat on the, the things that we do and do them well, 
have those turn into positives for us. Uh, and if we can lean on those things, then, then we'll be able to make some plays with some other creative things. Thank you, Scott. Mm -hmm. And final one for Coach Frost, uh, back to Sam McEwen. Hey, Scott, um, how did you see an offseason benefit with Matt Lubick having a full offseason to kind of tinker with things? And then how beneficial is it going to get uh, to have a full spring camp where he can kind of he can kind of tinker and work with things a little bit. He didn't get that chance last year. No, we didn't. I mean, the minute uh, COVID hit and we stopped spring ball, uh, Lubick drove back to Colorado. I didn't see him for a while. Um, it, it was tough, not just for the players, but for the staff. Um, you know, we couldn't couldn't really have staff meetings because we were in a half time in a giant team meeting room where we couldn't hear each other. Sometimes meeting in the indoor where. It was like a barn in there. Uh, we didn't get to spend a lot of time together as a coaching staff in the off season. Um, it's been great to have things back a little closer to normal. Um, Lube and I really, along with the rest of the offensive staff, have done a lot of work to try to figure out ways to keep evolving. Uh, but I, like I said to, to Sip, I think the key for us is to make sure that the things that we do, we, we got to do really well. Uh, we got to be efficient at and we got to use the right technique and fundamentals and, and really dial those things in in, in the spring. And uh, I think he and I are on the, are on the same page with that and, and also where we want to go with, with the offense. You've went from a smaller, smallish team to one of the bigger teams in the Big Ten. I mean, you've recruited that. You've recruited size. Your receivers are big. Your backs are big. Your tight ends are big. It, it, should fans anticipate when, they, when spring game come, rolls around that this is going to be a more of a power-based program even even if you guys retain some of those speed spread elements um yeah i guess it's safe to say that um you know a lot of the plays that people run in in spread sam it, are the same plays that, that we used to run in shotgun it's just from a different formation uh it's still zone it's still power it's still counter it's still outside zone wide zone um you know, you can be physical in those things, whether you're snapping the ball to a quarterback under center or, or in shotgun. Um, and, and that's where we've needed to improve. I think we have made improvements, um, still have some improvement to make, uh, but it's certainly going to give us a better chance to, to compete and, and win in the, in the physical battle when, when we're a bigger, stronger, faster football team. Uh, so between recruiting and, and the work Zach and his group's done, um, I think we're going to have a chance to fight with and, and hopefully win our share of the battles all year. And um, size definitely helps. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Coach. Uh, we'll have Coach Lubick up next in just a couple minutes. Thanks, guys.